Welcome back. I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile and we're speaking with Renee Delgado who is the Teacher of the Year for the Sacramento County Office. Congratulations. Thank you. Well tell us about yourself. Tell us you know where you teach and, and what you teach. I am a special education teacher at Leo A. Palmeter Middle School and High School. Explain, you know, explain what the Palmer campus is. Oh, we are a special education site within the Sacramento County Office of Education, and we take students from all over the county, um, from their home districts that have had. They need a little bit more, a um, little bit more. Um, what's the word? Structure. They need a little more structure than, and that that we can provide them with, and so. What um, we do at our campus is our middle school is called the Discovery Academy and their job basically is to kind of experience everything that our campus has to offer. Then we have a Culinary Academy for, and a Sustainable Environment Academy for our older students, for the high schoolers. So when you're talking about uh, teaching students with emotional disturbances, explain what that is to, to, the, to the average person who do, doesn't know. Well, I mean, it's it's more than just um, behavior. It's behavior that impacts um, learning, and um, our students have issues that have had them. They haven't been able to be, be successful in at their home districts, and so the, the behaviors range anywhere from um, you know just not being able to follow the classroom rules. Some of them have gotten a lot of fights, and so. Um, these behaviors have impacted their learning so much that they need the more the more structured environment and so you know they they come to us and they're in a smaller smaller classroom um, less students and more support and so when you have uh, you know kids of all different levels and different um, let's say emotional needs uh, what's it like trying to you know kind of c control that and stay on task with the lesson you it sounds like you're really juggling a lot of things at once yeah, a lot of it is, um, you know, sometimes it takes a little while just to get everybody in their seats and uh, mm -hmm. ready to learn or look like they're ready to learn. And that's why I say, you know, if you're not ready to learn, just look like you're ready to learn. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, just in case, uh, just in case Miss Roth comes in here, everybody look like you're, you're trying to learn something right now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but that's sometimes could be the challenge is getting everybody sitting down and ready to engage and ready to to work so that can be a challenge but you know we do a lot of behavior support a lot of positive behavior support we try to reward good behavior when we see it and you know that kind of varies from kid to kid sometimes we have a student that's having a hard time sitting down and um, following directions when they do it you know we got to jump all over and you know give them that praise um, we have a, a behavior support um, program within our classroom within the school where we give um, in my classroom they get um, money on their their um, balance sheets and in the school they for the school-wide program they get what we call positive referrals kind of a play on the uh, the referral that gets you sent up to the office these are the ref the positive referral that you get to uh, you know because you're doing you got caught doing something good so a lot of we try to work with a lot of positive uh, positive support so do you feel that the students in that type of a setting uh, need I mean, all students need positive reinforcement, Correct. but students in that setting might need a, a lot extra. Yeah, I mean, there's we're we're trying to get them to um, get them back, you know, to that to that level where they can function in the classroom and and uh, and you know actually receive their education. So um, they need a lot of that reinforcement. And like sometimes the most powerful reinforcement is just uh, you know a verbal praise. You know, hey, good job. I'm really proud of you today. And sometimes that's better than you know, any, uh, you know, token or, you know, little prize, um, just that praise that, that we give them is, uh, you know, and it might not be for me, it might be from my, my aide uh, or, you know, one of, the, um, one of the counselors on campus. So um, just that little bit of praise uh, goes a long way. So uh, as far as uh, using motivation in the classroom and motivating students, would, would you say positive praise is probably the best tool you have? It's one of them, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, you couple it, I mean, there's, we're trying to reinforce all the time, and some kids respond, you know, some kids respond uh, better to certain things. Uh, I mean, we have one kid that will, you know, if I print him out a, uh, a word search, I mean, that's a very powerful thing for me to print him out a word search or a coloring page. Um, that could be a powerful little prize for, for some of these guys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then some kids need a little bit more, um, and, um, 
and we try to do what we can to accommodate them. So what made you become a teacher? How did you get here? Um, I was, I've always kind of gravitated towards working with, uh, working with students or working with, uh, with kids. Right out of college, uh, we talked about it before, I was a sociology major, so right out of college, uh, went and worked at a, at a group home with the, the same population that I'm working with now, more mm -hmm. or less. Um, these kids were all in foster care, so I worked in a group home and just kind of moved from there. I've always been interested in coaching and kind of, well, let's put the two together and be a teacher and um, just found my, found my niche in special ed and working with the ED students. What kind of a, a gratification do you get working with the, the ED kids? I think just that, that when they appreciate something or when they succeed, um, you know, that feels, that's great. Um, big one would be getting a kid from our campus and transitioning them back into a regular, their regular home campus, their regular, um, their, their home school. Why, and explain, you know, why that's important. Well, that's, I mean, for some kids, I mean, we have kids that are really, they're content being where they're at and we love them. I mean, they like being there at our campus and, you know, they're going to get a, a regular diploma just like everybody else. And they're, you know, it's a public, public school and you know that's great and they love being there but some kids want to go on and um, we have some kids that are really we have some great athletes at our school that are and they're really motivated by you know I want to go play football at you know back in my home school you know in my community high school and I want to do that so we really try to use for some kids we use that as kind of the end game here you know everything kind of revolves around are you going to meet that goal of getting back to your, your home school and you're going to play football, you're going to play basketball or do whatever it is you want to do. So that's kind of a real powerful motivator for some of our guys. Now you're a wrestling coach as well. Correct. You at uh, Casa Robles, Casa Robles in North. Orange Vale. So explain kind of how being a teacher, being a coach, or coach are the same and you know the skills that you need to kind of cross both. I think uh, you know having expectations whether you know athletes or or students you got you know you have expectations and you set the bar and sometimes you set a little high I mean and sometimes you got to be pushed for them to meet that so mm -hmm. um, just like a, you know I coach my wrestlers or same thing I, uh, I do with my students you know they need to be pushed a little bit and um, and you know when you're pushed and even when you fail I think you know if that failure is where you actually learn and uh, you know students in the classroom, it's the same thing as uh, on the wrestling mat. I tell you know, I tell my wrestlers, you know, what'd you learn from that loss? I mean, the loss is, you know, you learn from it, right? I mean, you don't learn a lot from wins; you learn more from losses. And same thing, uh, we learn from our failures. And in the classroom, you know, students gonna fail a lot, but where are they learning from it? And in our classroom, they they fail a lot in, um, you know, everyday kind of procedures. And but we got to take that opportunity to learn from it, and that's kind of what we do and that's kind of kind of how I feel about you know the two you know that's that same kind of mentality is you know learning from your failures. So what would you say to someone who's considering teaching as a profession? I mean what are some of the highlights? How would you put a sales pitch together? Um, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Save yourself. No it's uh, I would say the best it's rewarding if you like working if you like working with kids and I, um, I was you know I've been doing a lot of thinking about this and it's uh, you know, we're all kind of indebted. If you if you like the person that you've become, you know, the adult you've become, and then you're kind of, you know, I've, I've always felt like when I got into wrestling, coaching wrestling, you know, I got a lot out of that sport. And so I kind of felt like maybe I should give back to, to something that's given me a lot. And I've had great teachers throughout my life. And you know, whether it's, you know, elementary school, high school, college, I've had great teachers and I think, uh, you know, my way of kind of giving back to society has been kind of teaching, you know, and it's, it sounds a little, you know, maybe a little, uh, I don't know, <laughs> kind of pompous or whatever, but I feel like, you know, that's kind of our job is we're kind of indebted, you know, if you want to give back to your community and give back to society and as a whole, it's a great thing to do. And like you say, if, you t if, if a kid can look at himself in the mirror and say, I, I like the person that I've become, then you feel you've done your job as a teacher. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations to oh, you on you. being the Sacramento County Office of Education Teacher of the Year. We've been speaking with uh, Renee Delgado. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks.